Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so along with hitting that thumbs up button for me and sharing the video that definitely helps me a lot, helps grow the channel and drop your comments. I love the comments, definitely wanna hear your thoughts and feelings especially about this kind of a game. This is a rough, rough loss for us. Uh, went down to Miami. Uh, Knicks got their butts beat 109 to 99. Uh, the, the game was actually, it was only a one point difference uh, with three minutes left. It was 95, 94. The Knicks would only go on to score in a, another five points, the remaining five, three minutes of the game. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Precious Achua, who I don't know why he played the entire fourth quarter, uh, especially since uh, the Knicks had a very good third quarter with Hartenstein and Mitch sharing the minutes at the five position. The Knicks won that quarter by five, 30 to 25, uh, and it was their first uh, decent offensive uh, quarter. Somehow Thibs thought uh, the Knicks looked better with the Chua in there, and uh, it actually turned out to burn them because uh, Achua bit on a Terry Rozier uh, fake, and uh, he fouled him at the three-point line, sent him to the line, hit those three free throws, and the score. I mean, the, the Knicks were just never the same after that. Uh, and shout out to Bruce Wayne, who highlighted that on one of my tweets. Uh, he mentioned that, so I'm bringing that up, and that is absolutely true. Uh, that definitely, it, 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 like, it, it put more wind against the Knicks at that point to try, they had already struggled to get the game tied, and then it was kind of a seesaw back and forth battle for a stretch there in the fourth quarter where it looked like the Knicks maybe, okay, now we bring in Brunson. Dante was sitting uh, for that fourth quarter because he played the entire third quarter uh, and he was the high scorer of the game at the time he finished with 31 points, but he had a nice 11 points in that uh, third quarter, shot three of five from the three point line. So it looked like, okay, we bring Dante in and then bring Brun and then Brunson, you know, maybe he'll have some fourth quarter heroics, but it looks like finally the intense minutes load that the starters have had to endure for pretty much the past month and a half. Uh, actually, if you can even go back, I mean, you can go back even further, but uh, at least the past month and a half, uh, according to Tommy Beer, uh, Deuce McBride has logged the most minutes of any player in the NBA in the last two weeks, and Josh Hart has logged the most minutes of any player since March 1st. That starts catching up to you, and uh, it, we saw it tonight. Also, lack of depth, and uh, we're not lack of lack of depth due to injuries. You know, we lost three key players. We got Mitch back tonight, uh, so that was good. At least he got he got some minutes there. Uh, he looked uh, decent uh, at times. Uh, he did miss his two free throws in that third quarter, which would have been nice to have gotten. Uh, some of the problems with him, especially in tight games, it's hard to leave him in because he can get fouled, uh, and he doesn't, you know, have an outside shot uh, at this at this time. Uh, so he is kind of an offensive liability if things aren't clicking all around. <sighs> this loss sucked. Let's just be real. It sucked. The Knicks have fallen to fifth seed. I do have highlights for you, but let me get going on this stuff here. Uh, you saw the previous uh, video there, the little title card, uh, having the Knicks watch party this Sunday against the Milwaukee Bucks, who did lose tonight, so that's great. The Cavs are on the verge of, of winning, uh, so that's going to be rough. A uh, little more, another half game distance between us and the Cavs is going to appear fairly shortly. And uh, everyone's like breathing down each other's necks in there. Uh, we may struggle to stay in the playoffs, to stay out of the play in. We're only two games away from the play in. Uh, but there's seven. The, the good news is there's only seven games left. Only seven games left in the season, and three of them are against the Chicago Bulls, who we play very well against. Now, will we have OG Ananobi back for that? We don't know. Will we have Rand Julius Randle back for that? No idea. Uh, will Mitch stick around? Hopefully. Hopefully, this is the beginning of him to uh, build his conditioning back up. Another seven games, it, it will be crucial for him to get back into game shape. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, like I mentioned, 109.99, the Knicks lost. Uh, here's the standings as of this moment. Uh, Cleveland is still playing, and it looks like they're going to win, so it looks like they're going to go to 46 and 30. So now we're going to be two 
wins behind the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the reason we are listed in fifth, even though we have the same record as the Orlando Magic, is because we lost the season series to them, uh, one to three. Uh, so uh, I, actually, at this point, we would play the Orlando Magic in the first round. And in reality, I'm fine with that. I think uh, we can take care of business against them, uh, especially if Mitch keeps getting back into shape. We'll need him. And uh, I think it's looking like we're going to get OG back. It's just a matter of when, not if. So uh, at this point, they're just resting him as much as possible. He has tennis elbow. Have no idea how a basketball player can get tennis elbow. <laughs> you know, it's kind of ridiculous. It's not. There's no movements that you do that are similar to hitting a baseball. I mean, hitting a, a, a tennis ball. The torque that you have to apply in the repetitive motion. You do this like thousands of times in a, in, in a five set match or whatever. So I don't understand uh, how he got this injury uh but it came from the spurs the, the bone spur they operated on it maybe they made a mistake uh who knows we'll get some clarity eventually but what we do know is that he it's a matter of when he returns so that is good news i am expecting him to return for the playoffs and that's fine i know it, it, as long as we stay above the play-in i'm okay with resting og all the way until the playoffs and then you get that additional week especially if you stay in a six seed or above you avoid having to play during the, that first week so that's the status at the moment in terms of standings uh one of the dangerous situations are uh let's uh, we do play the bulls three games out of out of the last seven so that's in, in our benefit but we also play the celtics but that's the th uh, third to last game of the season it's possible they'll be resting guys look at them they're sitting pretty they're gonna, about to win their 60th uh uh win at some point the next game they play they'll probably win it hit the 60 mark they'll rest some guys they just they don't want them to to lose their sharpness but they probably will rest some guys so the knicks have an opportunity to take that game against the celtics just based on that uh, but again, uh, the watch party game, which is next Sunday, April 7th, uh, that's against Milwaukee. You know, that's going to be an interesting game. Uh, if somehow the, uh, the Cavs, let's say the Cavs keep winning, putting pressure on Milwaukee in terms of the seating there, uh, Milwaukee might step it up. Uh, in, any, in any fashion, any way, shape, or form, the Knicks need to win the, at, least, at least four of the next th uh, seven games. We need to go at least four and three. They'll finish 48 and 34, which is uh, a great win total. And that should be good enough to avoid falling out of the playoffs. Very achievable. Uh, you know, like I said, three games against uh, the Bulls. Uh, we do have a game against the Kings, uh, which, you know, that's that will be interesting. That's uh, but that's at the Garden, I believe. Is that right? The Kings? Or did I mess that up? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that. Uh, but look at that. Miami is, you know, they're only a half game behind the Pacers, so they could jump up and get that sixth seed, put the Pacers down to seventh, and uh, it could be a disaster. <laughs> you know, so we want to avoid that melee. Man, it's a bummer that these injuries have hit us at this moment and hit us hard, and that the bench has really struggled to score. Though tonight, I got to call out, Bojan did finally wake up and give us some production from the bench. Uh, he played about 20 minutes. Uh, he shot 6 of 10 overall, 60%, but only 1 of 4 from the three-point line, 25%. But he did give us 16 points, and in the plus-minus, he finished even, a zero. So that's the first time in a while that that has happened. Uh, and... Uh, we should count that as a positive. Maybe, you know, like I've mentioned before, he has about seven, he has seven games left to prove himself to Thibs that he can be a reliable scorer off the bench because he has to be because his defense is just something, it's, it's incredibly porous uh, and he's, he's, he allows way too many points uh, from his position uh, in, in the bench. Uh, sorry, I, <laughs> my cat is uh, coughing up a hairball and it's distracting me. Uh, so I'll we'll just keep going here. Uh, I tweeted this out at halftime, and it uh, bore out for the rest of the game. The reality is the Knicks look fried. Too many mental mistakes, bad passes, poor closeouts, air balls. Knicks down 58-43. So the Knicks were down 15 points at the half. So to think that they came back and tied this game in the second half shows how gutty this team really is. If they just had a 
you know, another guy. If they just had OG back, you know, it could make a world of difference. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the minutes have caught up, and Brunson just didn't look sharp enough tonight. Uh, definitely did impact it. He only shot 5 of 18, 27.8%, 1 of 6 from the three-point line for him, 16.7%. Uh, he did finish with 20 points and got 10 assists, but uh, he was a minus 9 while he was on the court. This is a guy who was unbelievable in the pre previous two games against OKC and the Spurs. He was a combined, I think, plus 37 or something while he was on the floor during those two games. So eventually he's going to have a down game, and Spo loves to strategize. One thing that I noticed that uh, they were doing uh, defensively is whenever Brunson had the ball, they would create a bubble around him. Uh, they wouldn't just double-team him. They would also congest the air, the space, the floor space in front of him, put more obstacles for him to have to try to weave around. And then eventually, you know, you kind of just pull up and try to shoot, but he's not shooting from the spot he wants to get to. So uh, Spo was able to uh, impact Brunson tonight. But I do think that if he if, you know, if he wasn't as exhausted, I mean, look, <laughs> he, 61 points against uh the, uh, the Spurs, you know, big game against OKC. The guy, you know, is probably just exhausted. Sometimes you just don't have it. Uh, tonight, if he had been as crisp as he was uh, in either of those two games, he the Knicks probably would have won tonight. Uh, at the half, they were only shooting 6 of 20 from the three-point line. They did pick that up in the second half and shot uh, 40%, 6 of 15. Uh, and but the lack of bench scoring resulting in minutes overload 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 for the starters has caught up with New York and I'll show you more information on that. Uh, this is uh, Nick's Muse tweeted this out is it was kind of a head scratcher as I mentioned before. I don't know why these guys weren't in the fourth quarter. Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein combined for 28 minutes tonight. Strange. Actually, Mitch did play in the fourth quarter. Sorry, don't want to. Uh, actually, no, he did not play in the fourth quarter. Precious went all 12 minutes in the fourth quarter there. Strange. Not sure what happened because uh, Isaiah was having a good game. He was part of that uh, third quarter where the Knicks took took finally got themselves back into this game. I don't know if they saw something. Maybe Isaiah re-aggravated. Or, I don't know, the minutes uh, management, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe he was complaining about some soreness in the ankle. Uh, Mitch, I can see why he kept them out because Mitch is still working back into game shape. And, uh, you know, the, the free throws are just atrocious. So uh, it's, you know, it's a risk when you leave him out there. But at the same time, Isaiah Harnstein probably should have been subbed in uh, with for the last four to five minutes of the game itself and not had pressures out there. Uh, Tommy Beard, this is a two-part tweet. Uh, this is a Tommy Beard tweet. This is the top half of it, uh, and he's talking about the minutes here. 45 more minutes for Hart. 45 more minutes for Deuce. More bumps and bruises for Brunson. Uh, he was. He was on the floor constantly. He was fouled constantly. Uh, Thibs, in the post-game interview, he said he was fouled. 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 Like he said it like five or six times. Then he got up and left. Uh, worst kind of loss. A taxing loss. That's three such straight losses in a row for the Knicks. Yes, the Knicks have lost three games in a row. This tweet continues, and this is a portion of his newsletter, uh, which I read some of this uh, today in the pregame show. The issue right now for Thibs and the Knicks organization is that every game is crucial due to how tightly bunched the standings are yet if og and randall do not return will the worn out nova bockers possibly be able to make a playoff run if they keep the pedal to the metal deuce leads the nba in minutes played over the past two weeks josh hart leads the league in minutes played over the past two months and dante divincenzo ranks inside the top 25 in minutes played in 2024 we know the pounding Brunson takes on a nightly basis and the load he's had to shoulder this whole season. It's It does eventually get to you. That's my, I added that part. This is showing, this is uh, the minutes. These are the minutes since March 1st. Josh Hart is indeed leading the NBA. He's averaging about 42 minutes per game. So in the last 15 games since March 1st, he's averaged 42 minutes a game. The other issue with him is he just doesn't look at the basket. Uh, I believe he scored two points tonight. 
when you have a starting forward who plays 46 minutes and only puts up two buckets, only attempts three shots, didn't even attempt a three-pointer, comes up with two points, he was a minus four tonight. It's amazing. He was only a minus four. But still, imagine if he had put up a couple of buckets. We could have won this game. Dante DiVincenzo, DiVincenzo is 10th in minutes played uh, since March 1st, averaging 37.2 minutes per game. And I definitely had some stats a while back. I think about uh, it was about two, three, three weeks ago. Uh, you could see a tremendous impact, a, a dip in his shooting efficiency. Uh, he was struggling. He has picked it up since then. So that's the good news. But, you know, the other aspects of his game, uh, making mental mistakes, do pile up. Though he actually played a pretty decent game tonight. So don't want to uh, put that on him tonight in terms of the minutes low. But if you see some of these other guys, Miles uh, Bridges, DeJounte Murray, uh, Maxi, Gobert, other than Gobert, other than Gobert on this list, everyone else puts up points. Everyone else scores. Josh Hart has to contribute points as well. I get it. I, 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 I understand the love affair with, oh, well, you're not scoring. You can still impact the game positively doing other things. All well said and done. However, <laughs> we're down our number two score and we're down our number three score, which is OG. So we need, because he's also replaced RJ in, in IQ, so that's the other thing. We need buckets from Josh Hart. You have to figure out a way, Josh Hart, to get us points. Doesn't matter. Got to get us at least 10 points a game. 10 points, we win this game, or at least we're tied. See? All right, let's get to the highlights. So the game started off uh, halfway through the first uh, the Knicks uh, got closer. There was 15-14 right there, but uh, they got off to kind of a rocky start. And then by the end of that first quarter, we were down by 12. The Knicks uh, basically just let uh, the Heat take over in this last four minutes of the game. I uh, gave open looks to guys like, uh, uh, well, that was Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier was on a heater in that first quarter, scored 12 points, uh, four of six uh, and then Jimmy Butler uh, contributed seven points himself. They had very well-balanced score. They, uh, the Heat put up 34 points in that first quarter. The Knicks could only put up 22 points. And uh, Jalen Brunson, rough start. Uh, he, he had six points. The, le the leading, score, leading scores at the end of the first quarter were Dante and Deuce, both with seven points, and both of them played all 12 minutes. So let's go to the second quarter. Look, that was a nice drive by iHeart right there. He looked good. That's why I don't understand why he didn't play in the fourth quarter. So I don't know if it was injury. Maybe he did pick up something. We'll hear about it later. I haven't been able to watch uh, any of the post game or uh, interviews or even. I just caught that one little clip of Fibs uh, saying uh, he was fouled. 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 <laughs> Uh, the Knicks only could put up, after all, after putting up an anemic 22 points in the first quarter, they put up an even more, an, a further anemic uh, 21 points in the second quarter. But they were able to suffocate uh, the Heat uh, defensively and uh, get them to start finally missing some shots. Uh, they only put up 24 points themselves, but they still went into the half up. What, what were they up? 12? They were up 15 at the half. The Knicks were down 15 points at the half. It was 58 to 43 at the half. Now you can see here we're still kind of like, okay, can we get back in this game? Boom, he hits that three. So now it's just a nine-point game. But every time the Knicks made a little move, the Heat were able to oh, – oh, this is a nice play right here. Look at that. He got even closer now. It was a seven-point game. But the way we closed that half was atrocious. And look who's on the court. Uh, pressure's Achua. Again, I don't really understand uh, the precious fascination. Maybe, perhaps, Thibs is trying to wake him up, you know? In the in, in the eventuality, the possibility that Randall isn't able to come back. Because it does, he's the one who's more in question whether Randall can actually come back or not. It's it, But it looks like OG will eventually return. Here we are. We're, now we're in the in the third quarter, and at this point, uh, the Knicks were able to close uh, the, uh, the deficit down. But then the Heat pushed it up to 16 points again, and then the Knicks caught fire. 
Uh, they started hitting their buckets. They shot four of nine from the three-point line, 44.4%. They shot 66% in that quarter itself, 10 of 15. And they picked up nine assists. They were moving the ball around beautifully. Uh, they outscored the Heat 30 to 25. And I really would thought, you know what? I have a, but that was a tough, tough play right there. So here we go. This is now, I think we're now, it's a 14 point lead. I think they score again here. Oh no, here we got a nice, oh yeah, Dante, nice steal. Dante picked up, uh, how many steals did Dante have tonight? Dante had, Dante had four steals tonight. Hartenstein had three steals. The Knicks did a nice job, active hands in that respect. They picked up 11 steals tonight as a team and here you go you can see they're finally getting a little bit of continuity as uh, Clyde likes to say nice open look for Dante right there but Deuce I gotta tell you loved the way he played this game today look at that bomb that was a bomb from deep and then Deuce comes in watch this he another dunk from Deuce beautiful it's not it's not a, a Knicks game if Deuce is not dunking at least once a game and hitting a big bucket in a big three-point shot in the fourth quarter he's becoming a three-point god in the fourth quarter for the Knicks here we go and now we're into the fourth quarter you can see the Knicks are down 10 and then they're down 13 because the Heat hit this three-point corner uh, corner three-pointer but it was answered back right here by Dante DiVincenzo. Came out firing in that fourth quarter to finish with 31 points total for the game. Uh, the Knicks are now down by eight, now 10, uh, with 10 minutes to go. Uh, the Knicks came out of that uh, timeout and scored, so now it's an eight-point deficit. But you can see the activity. Again, Precious not understanding why he was left in this game. Uh, there we go. Finally, a uh, little floater from Brunson. I thought, okay, you know what? Maybe Brunson's game is returning here. Beautiful uh, turnover right there. I mean, uh, steal, actually. Deflect. And then Deuce, here's a big three-pointer right there. Big one. So now the score is 92-88. That's the closest the Knicks had been all game long. And then Bojan came through with some big buckets in the fourth quarter. Right there, sinks the midi, gets the uh, steal. And Deuce hits a, oh, he actually, he didn't hit that one. That was a nice putback by Achua. I think that was the only bucket Achua had in the whole quarter. Yep, it was. He contributed two points. No points for Josh Hart in the, four, in the fourth quarter. So here, oh, okay, this is the play. I believe it's coming. So here, boom, Bojan hits another mini. Nice. We're down one. Oh, they didn't show it. See, that's the problem with these highlights. They should have shown the pressure to Achua fouling Terry Rozier above the break on the left side here sending him to the line scored three points and that was it you can see the game the knicks really didn't have much else right now they're just kind of struggling to stick around but clock was uh, running down terry rogier uh, who had been stifled for a little while by deuce did catch fire late in that fourth quarter and he ended up uh, in the fourth quarter with uh, scoring six points uh uh yuck actually only hit one bucket he only hit one bucket in that fourth quarter. So I don't know what I'm talking about in that respect, but he did have three assists. Maybe that's... Oh, he went to the free throw line. That's what it is. He hit all three of those three. Uh, that was the one three-point shot he hit. So the Knicks lose. The Knicks lose to the Heat. Depressing. I hate losing to the Heat. Uh, the Knicks do own... A uh, uh, good news is the Knicks do own the season tiebreaker. We are 2-1. Against the Heat, so if we end up with the same record, we will have the advantage in the in the standings. So that's a very important thing to note. As you can see here, like Dante, high score, 31 points. Deuce McBride comes through with a big 24 points in his 45 minutes. Uh, four points for Isaiah Hartenstein, 20 points for Brunson, but he did struggle, though he got his 10 assists. Uh, Don, uh, Josh Hart, seven assists, six rebounds. But look, only one rebound for Isaiah Hartenstein. I wonder if that's the reason Deuce kept him. I mean, Deuce. <laughs> Thibs. Is that the reason Thibs kept Isaiah on the bench in the fourth quarter for rebounding? I don't know. I'm going to need some explanation at some point. But look at Bojan. Finally, the bench comes through. But only six, only 18 points total from the bench. Again, that is not going to cut it. You cannot survive in the NBA like that. 
especially when your, your starters are playing so many minutes. So I am wondering what is going to be the deal. Though tonight, the Knicks, uh, yeah, and again, the Knicks were almost doubled up again by the opponent's bench. 32 points for the Heat's bench, only 18 for the Knicks. Burks, zero points. Now, he only played three minutes because he just looked terrible. And, he, and it's one three-point shot. Wasn't he, he didn't need to take that shot from the corner. He could have, you know, taken one dribble, driven in. Who knows? Pass it to somebody else who might have a better look. Again, I don't know what is going on with him, but it's very distressing. The plus minus tells a really interesting story because Dante DiVincenzo as the high scorer in the game is also the worst in plus minus. Uh, Knicks lost by 17 points while he was on the court. That is shocking considering. Now this 10 point margin, it just kind of got out of hand in that last minute or so, minute and a half. And there's an extra five points uh, in the Heat's uh, final score that probably shouldn't even been there. This should have been a, a closer game. Uh, the final score should have been closer is what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, shout out to uh, Bojan. He finished uh, even in plus minus. Uh, and Isaiah Harnstein was the only one plus in the plus minus. He was a plus five, which again brings into question why he was a ghost in the fourth quarter. The Miami Heat, uh, you can see Terry Rozier came through with 34 points for him, 15 points for uh, Bam, 17 for uh, Jimmy Butler, and 14 for uh, Highsmith. Uh, Annoying. God, I can't stand the heat. <laughs> uh, they shot very well, 48.6% overall, 44.7% from the three-point line for Miami, and hit 20 of 21 free throws. I mean, boom. And yet, they really almost lost this game. So it's like these weird little positives that are in there. We know our guys are fried. We know that they make mistakes when they're cooked. We know that Josh Hart has been playing so many minutes, it's impacted his ability to score negatively. Uh, even with all that said, the Knicks were right there, had a chance to win this game. So that's the way to look. That's a positive way to look at it. Uh, in this, I believe we play, let's see, what games we've got. We, have, uh, we play on Thursday. Uh, we face the Kings at home. Uh, who, you know, we took care of business against them. Uh, let's hope that uh, the Knicks can uh, continue. Uh, yeah, we beat them 98-91 in, in their home arena. Let's follow that up again with a nice win. Uh, and then we play back-to-back. -back. We play Thursday, and then we play Friday in, oh no, in Chicago. So that's the first of three games against, oh, so that'll be three of the last six games of the season <laughs> against Chicago. And two of them are in Chicago. So that's, uh, we play Chicago on Friday, go up to Milwaukee to play the Bucks on Sunday, the watch party game right here. Right here, don't forget to check it out. You guys should come. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give hats away. Uh, we're gonna have some contests, uh, probably give some gift cards away and stuff. And the food is great, the vibe is great. You guys should definitely come by if you are available. Uh, so then, uh, then the Knicks play on Tuesday. They play the Bulls again in Chicago. So the Knicks go back down from Milwaukee. Then they head home to play against the Celtics uh, on April 11th. Uh, and then we have another back-to-back. -back, but these are at home. Oh, no, actually, the Boston Celtics. We go to Boston. We go to Boston the 11th. Uh, then uh, Friday the 12th. We're at home against the Nets. That should be a win. Uh, and the final game of the season is, I believe, Sunday the 14th against the Chicago Bulls. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, let's hope. I hope we sweep the, all the Bulls games. But let's say it is tough to, you know, beat teams. You know, would you play them in uh, close uh, in, in uh, clustered days? It's hard to completely dominate them completely. Let's say we win two out of three against the Bulls. Uh, we win uh, that Nets game, so uh, that's uh, uh, three and one. Uh, then we have the Bucks and the uh, oh, then we have the Kings. We should be we should win that game against the Heat uh, against the Kings. So that's uh, will be four and one. And then it's a matter of uh, who we face uh, against the Bucks and the Heat and the Celtics, who we can take care of business against. So hopefully, 
hopefully by the time the Knicks play this game on Sunday, uh, the Knicks will have ended this losing streak. The Knicks have lost three in a row and they have a, are on a little winning streak of two games in a row and they go into Milwaukee looking to uh, extend that winning streak. Uh, it's a lot to ask for, especially now with the back-to-backs and the minutes load. But if Bojan can continue to contribute some minutes, that means Thibs can rest some guys a little longer because that means the leads aren't extending. So that's the hope. And maybe Burks will finally wake up as well and give us some production from the bench. But also, you know what? We got Shake Milton on that bench. You know, he had a tremendous season last season for the uh, 79ers. So... You know, I know he was struggling this season, but, uh, you know, he could wake up. Maybe give us give him some some burn for these last seven games. Uh, and so that we have we can get, keep Dante fresh or give Deuce a burn, uh, you know, a little relaxation, though. He did play a good game today, even though he played 46 minutes. But guys like Josh Hart, too. You know, when when you're not scoring, uh, you need someone who's out there rebounding, doing the hustle plays. So then Josh Hart just spends too much time on the court. So there's a lot of things involved here. I'm hoping that Thibs and the players focus and get this together. Not focus. Focus is the wrong word. I hope that they figure out a way to close out strong and maybe win five of the last seven games of this season. Ooh, let's go. All right. Thank you for watching this. Again, check out uh, oh, <laughs> this way, uh, the watch party. Uh, on uh, April 7th. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit the thumbs up button for me and drop your comments. Love the comments. And uh, I will see you around Pittsburgh.